On the 2nd of June 1984, the Prime Minister of India, Indira Gandhi, spoke on All India Radio. She appealed to all sections of Punjab to not shed blood, but hatred. Some said it was a dishonest call. An assault was about to take place in Amritsar. Troops and artillery had reached the Golden Temple with one purpose, flush out Khalistani separatists holed up inside. This included their leader, Jarnail Singh Bindranwale, a man who had taken up arms against India's sovereignty. For the next 72 hours, there was bloodshed. More than 400 lives were lost. This was Operation Blue Star, a miscalculation. It neither ended terrorism nor Khalistani separatism, and definitely not the politics of religion. What it did was leave an indelible mark on the memories of Sikhs in India and abroad, a mark which continues to be exploited to this day. Hello and welcome to Gravitas Plus. I'm Palki Sharma Upadhyay. The Khalistan movement is now history. It has lost the support of the Sikh community in India. But the ongoing protests near New Delhi have turned the spotlight on this long dead movement. One issue is being used to reignite another. Hashtags have been flying, demanding a separate Sikh state. Rallies are being held outside India by Khalistanis. How did a protest in India become a debate about Khalistan? What exactly is the Khalistan movement? How did it begin? Does it still have support in India? Or is it just a tool for foreign forces to stoke unrest in India? The story begins in the year 1929. Motilal Nehru presented the Purna Swaraj, the Declaration of Independence, at the Lahore session of Congress. There were three groups of people who opposed it. The first was Muhammad Ali Jinnah of the Muslim League. The second was Dr. Bhim Rao Ambedkar campaigning for the rights of Dalits. And the third was Master Tara Singh of the Shiromani Akali Dal. This was the first ever articulation, the first ever demand for a Sikh homeland. By 1947, the demand turned into a movement. The Punjabi Suba movement, the partition of India, divided the state of Punjab into two. The Akali Dal wanted a separate Sikh Suba or province, a separate Sikh state within India on linguistic grounds. The State's Reorganization Commission rejected the demand. There were raids and protests. The movement lasted 19 long years, all the way till 1966. That's when the Indira Gandhi government finally relented. It divided Punjab into three parts. One Sikh majority state called Punjab, another Hindi majority state called Haryana, and the third part was Chandigarh, a union territory and a shared capital of Punjab and Haryana, and some of the hilly regions were merged into Himachal Pradesh. The trifurcation did not really solve the problem. Some were not happy with the areas allocated to Punjab. Others did not like the idea of a shared capital. So in 1973, Sikhs demanded autonomy for the state of Punjab. This is the Anandpur Sahib Resolution, a document that sought the right for Sikhs to frame their own constitution. By the 1980s, the resolution got a lot of traction. It found supporters. The biggest one was Jarnail Singh Bindranwale, a Sikh scholar who later turned into a militant. He had been campaigning across Punjab, but his views were too radical. Kushwant Singh, the famous Indian author, described Bindranwale as a man who, quote-unquote, exhorted every Sikh to kill 32 Hindus to solve the Hindu-Sikh problem. In 1982, Bindranwale joined hands with the Akali Dal to launch a civil disobedience movement that soon turned into insurgency. Bindranwale became a dangerous cult figure. No rules, no scruples, no morality bound him. He resorted to extremism. And to escape arrest, he took up residence inside the Golden Temple. For two long years, the government of India did not act. New Delhi dragged its feet. Finally, in June 1984, Delhi intervened with Operation Blue Star. The media was blacked out, all travel was suspended. This was perhaps the biggest internal security mission undertaken by the Indian Army. 83 soldiers died, 249 were injured, at least 493 militants were killed. Operation Blue Star ended on the afternoon of the 10th of June 1984. Four months later, on October 31st, 1984, Prime Minister Indira Gandhi was assassinated by her two Sikh bodyguards. Anti-Sikh riots followed. An estimated 8,000 Sikhs were killed. No one knows the full picture to this day. But this led to two decades of unrest in Punjab. There were multiple attacks by Khalistani separatists in India and abroad. 
This included the 1985 bombing of an Air India flight over the Atlantic, the 1986 assassination of General A.S. Vaidya, the 13th Army Chief of India, and in 1995, the Chief Minister of Punjab, Bayant Singh, was killed in a car bombing. All attacks were claimed by Khalistanis. Many Khalistanis found safe havens in the West. They began reinventing their narrative, promoted militants as heroes and martyrs of the faith. They used the Sikh diaspora for diplomatic and financial support. A number of pro-Khalistani groups propped up in the US, the UK, Germany, Canada and Pakistan. And the most notorious of them all is Sikhs for Justice, SFJ. And this man is the face of this body. A law graduate from Punjab University, currently an attorney in the US. You'll find his videos on social media. This man wants Greater Khalistan with headquarters in Lahore, which makes it amply clear who's driving the bus of his Khalistan cause. Pakistan. The same Pakistan where countless Sikhs were murdered and expelled in the name of Islam in 1947. In 1971, Zulfikar Ali Bhutto, the then Prime Minister, had told reporters that Pakistan would tear off a piece of India to avenge the loss of East Pakistan. No prizes for guessing which piece they're eyeing. Khalistan. The current Prime Minister of Pakistan tries to be subtle about his strategy. In November 2019, he reopened the Kartarpur Corridor for Sikh pilgrims. Indian opposition leaders and ex-Union ministers attended the inauguration. But so did notorious Khalistan supporters from Pakistan, like Gopal Singh Chavla. It was quite clear that what India saw as a pilgrim's corridor was in the eyes of Islamabad a potential Khalistan corridor. The Pakistan foreign minister called it a googly. And you have seen it, and the world has seen it, Pakistan then we have Canada, a country that wears multiculturalism on its hat. The Canadian Prime Minister played to the galleries by visiting the Golden Temple on his visit to India. Do you know who was part of his entourage? Jaspal Atwal, a separatist convicted of trying to assassinate an Indian minister. And if this was not enough, the same year the Canadian government went on to remove Khalistani extremism from its report on terrorist threats vis-à-vis -vis India and Canada. So we would like to show Mr. Trudeau this 2020 report by a top Canadian think tank, McDonnell Luria Institute. It called the Khalistan movement a geopolitical project by Pakistan which threatens the national security of Canadians as well as Indians. If only Justin Trudeau could see beyond his vote bank politics. Then we have the United Kingdom, another breeding ground for Khalistani separatists. In recent years, we've seen violent demonstrations by Khalistanis outside the Indian High Commission in London. In fact, just two months back, a protest in London was hijacked by Sikhs for Justice. Pro-Khalistan flags were raised. Known Khalistanis like Paramjit Singh Pamma were spotted at the rally. At another protest in Washington, Khalistani separatists desecrated the statue of Mahatma Gandhi. In Rome, they vandalized the Indian embassy office. They installed a Khalistani flag and scribbled Khalistan Zindabad on the walls. Do you see the pattern here? The Khalistan bogey has re-emerged globally. Foreign forces are using this dead movement as a tool to stoke unrest in India. Foreign governments are appeasing them to get votes. Thankfully, in India, the separatist movement is all but dead, which is why it is important to guard against those trying to reignite it. It is important to call out those who may want to hijack India's domestic issues, who may want to use a farmer protest to push a nefarious separatist agenda. Sikhs in India are not clamoring for an independent state. Some of them are protesting, and it would be wrong to label every critic a Khalistan supporter. By doing so, you only enable India's enemies to exploit the divisions. A fringe cannot define a majority. We must remember that the Sikh community's contribution to national security in India has been immense. The Sikh regiment is the most highly decorated regiment in the Indian Army. Sikh soldiers have resolutely guarded the nation's frontiers for centuries. They have every right to protest. <laughs> It's fundamental in every democracy, as fundamental as the right to disagree with those protesting. Gravitas Plus, co-presented by Skoda. Simply clever.